Welcome to the exam room brought to you by the Physicians Committee. I'm so excited about this next segment. It's probably going to go by very fast. We have NASCAR driver Landon Castle with us here via Skype. Landon, welcome to the show, my man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it is absolutely my pleasure. And before we get going, I'd like to tell everybody, give Landon a follow on Twitter at Landon Castle. He's a good guy and a vegan. How long have you been vegan now? Um, man, I think I'm, I'm starting my fifth year. Um, my wife has been a vegetarian for over 10 years. Wow. Um, and we've probably been fully plant-based uh, for about five years. Is she the one that convinced you to go vegan? Um, I don't know if convinced. I mean, she definitely is the was the inspiration there and, and, and kind of helped introduce me to it. I mean, for me, it started out uh, when I was traveling on the road, but then going home, my wife, you know, she just wouldn't cook meat or anything like that. And I'm, I'm kind of a bottomless pit when it comes to eating anyways. <laughs> and so I didn't really have any you know, preferences about eating at home and I wasn't cooking my own meals. She's, she's kind of the cook in the house. So, you know, I just ate what she made. Cool. And, um, and so I would eat at home and whatever she made. And, and so I was kind of eating at home on a vegetarian, um, diet. We still, I, I'd say the only thing that was animal product at the time was maybe cheese. Sure. Um, and uh and then but then i'd go on the road and i just kind of ate what i want and, mm -hmm. and ate out ate the north same way i've ate my whole life yeah and i got to a point where i could start to really tell a difference in how i felt um waking up in the morning and and um and just my general health and and um uh, energy and um and i felt i when i kind of identified that um i realized i thought there was some opportunity there for me to improve my human performance and, and improve um, use that to my advantage to make me a better race car driver so um, I started reading books I started um, researching and I, you know my wife would probably make my wife laugh because she this is all stuff she already knew um, <laughs> she's kind of a bookworm and um, you know had been telling me for a while already that I needed to read the China study and right and things like that and and uh, so I started reading some books and, and, and I would say, um, uh, reading, um, uh, finding ultra, uh, rituals book was probably what really set me off, um, uh, to, to, to make a big change. Cool. Um, and, and so from that point, the both of us, um, went from, you know, went fully plant-based. So you talk about just feeling better and making you a better race car driver. I, I think that a lot of people who aren't really familiar with the sport don't realize how taxing it is on the body to sit in that car for three hours plus. I mean, you've got the air temperature outside, so you may think, oh, it's 70 degrees, they have the window open. But inside that car, I mean, it's, it's what, 50 degrees hotter because the sun's coming down on the asphalt, the track temperature is completely different, and then inside the car itself, it's even hotter, right? Yeah, I mean the cars, um, the cars get really hot. So in the summertime, if it, if it's a 80 or 90 degree day out, uh, you can be certain that the cars are going to be 125, 130 degrees in the cockpit. Um, so um, we, I have a helmet blower um, that hooks to the top of my helmet, and um, and it it basically it doesn't blow cold air. It's not like an air conditioner by any means, but what it does is is runs air through a carbon monoxide filter. Um, so at least I get some fresh oxygen or the, or filtered air, yeah. um, into my helmet. And even if it's 90 degrees outside, then that air blowing in my helmet is 90 degrees. Right. So, um, but that's a heck of a lot better than just the stagnant, hot, you know, um, poisoned air inside the race car. Sure. But so, um, it, it definitely gets hot in our cars. We, you know, you, you burn a lot of calories and, and our elevated heart rate in a car for a four hour race is, is that of a half marathon or a marathon. Sure. Yeah. And, and I would imagine that uh, with that being such an endurance sport, I mean, your diet actually really helps you quite, quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, that's where, um, and, and, and really even beyond, um, the plant-based side of things, just, just, when I started training for triathlons, doing half Ironman, um, eating plant-based, and really kind of understanding how food is a fuel and not a pleasure source, 
Um, and looking at it that way is, is, is when I was able to take advantage of it um, in the race car. So um, I have a new nutrition plan inside the car, um, just like you would if you were running a marathon or doing an Ironman. So what is that nutrition plan? I'm curious. Do they have green smoothies they hand you on pit row? <laughs> um, no, I, I use um, I, I basically use um, a product called Infinite, um, and and it's a custom blend of of carbs and and electrolytes, and I get about 350 calories per hour. Oh wow! Um, I've I've done a little bit of everything um, through the years. Um, sometimes I'll I'll have a banana. Um, I, I'll have my crew, um, keep a banana in the pit box if I feel like I need one. Um, I've used gels and things like that. Um, it's kind of hard to put, um, fresh foods in the car cause the right. car is so hot and right. things get ruined. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I keep a water bottle that's uh, 20 ounces and it has my, a 300 calorie mix in it. I drink one of those per hour in the car. And if it's in a, a particularly hot race, um, then I'll drink one of those plus, maybe a lighter hydration mix that doesn't have uh, quite the calories in it. For safety reasons, I'm assuming you're eating that banana when you're under caution, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, do you and mean... uh, throw in the peel on the track for uh, for my competitors, of course. Yeah, when you need a debris caution, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually had a, in a race, after a race one time, somebody, uh, one of the other drivers came up to me and was like, did you throw a banana peel on the racetrack at one point? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, actually, yeah, I did. And they were like, I thought I saw you throw something out of the car, and it looked like a banana peel. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> do, do you remember one race in particular that was more taxing than another? Um, there's a couple race tracks that it just seems like year after year, every time we go, the cars are 20 degrees hotter. Um, and I would say that Indianapolis um, is one, and New Hampshire um, the race in New Hampshire is another one. Hmm. Um, in Indy, the reason that race seems to be so hot is because the cars are so low. Um, they've got all the windows blocked off uh, for aerodynamics, and it's always 100 degrees in August. Um, and uh, in New Hampshire, the cars, again, are really low to the racetrack, and New Hampshire is a track that generates a lot of brake heat, so the cars um, get a lot of temperature that way. So. Right. Um, those two races are probably the hottest. Now, I want to switch gears a little bit and ask you about this, because in one of the articles I was reading about you, you mentioned that you have a really addictive personality, and that's something that I identify with. I mean, when I was 420 pounds, I mean, I was flat addicted to food, and honestly, I still am. I've just kind of changed that addiction. I'm kind of paranoid, yep. though, that if I have one slip-up, like it's, it's going to be like an ex-smoker who thinks that they have it licked after five years, they can have just one. But, you know, the next day I'd be back at Taco Bell again and again and again and again. Do you have right. those same types of concerns? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I've, um, I kind of will, I have to make sure that I'm not being a junk food vegan. Right. Um, and so typically I will, my wife and I will do a reset a couple times a year through, by way of a juice cleanse. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done I've done juice cleanses for a long time now, and um, I'll actually do kind of a juice smoothie cleanse um, so I can go longer. And, you know, if I've got to do one for a week, uh, five, six, seven days, um, I'll do it where I'm just maybe having a smoothie in the morning, juices all day long, and a smoothie yeah. at night. Um, I'll do that for a week, and that'll be a good reset for me. Uh, because like, just like you, I mean, I, I slip up and, and, and where I, where I tend to struggle with the most is because I'm on the road so much mm -hmm. and it's just when you leave the racetrack and it's 7 PM and you just finished a long day of practicing and you're just hungry, but like yeah. you just got to get something because, because I'm more focused on getting to bed than I am anything <laughs> else. And I don't want to take, you know, you're just not in the mood to take the time and get something you know, you, you're just, you just need to fill your belly. And, and so, um, yeah, it takes a lot of discipline, but, um, those resets kind of help me remind myself why, um, why I became plant-based in the first place. 
Landon Castle is our guest here on the exam room, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Again, he's on the Twitters, at Landon Castle. And give us a follow as well, at PCRM and online, pcrm.org slash podcast. Now, we've talked about uh, the nutrition and how your body feels, but let's talk about how your mind feels, uh, because I was talking to one of our nutritionists here, and she was actually joking that, you know, people who have a plant-based Thanksgiving are less likely, in all honesty, to have quarrels at Thanksgiving dinner. You know, it's, it's just, just <laughs> something about making you feel better. So do you find that the plant-based diet kind of gives you that positive mental attitude? Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it does. <laughs> I mean, I think it, um, I, I think the benefits are throughout the whole body. So, um, you know, if, if you've got a healthy body, you've got a healthy mind and, um, you know, that energy isn't just physical, it's, it's going to be mental. It, and, um, you know, if you pigged out on turkey and gravy and mashed potatoes and you're laying on the couch grouchy and tired, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's that's that's definitely uh, that's definitely a product of what you ate. Yeah. The food coma. Do not poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so I, I need to ask you, I mean, you, you are in kind of a time of uncertainty right now with the season just wrapping up. We don't know uh, what your ride's going to be next year. So I guess the correlation here is with the veganism, with the plant based kind of giving you that positive mental attitude and just making your whole body feel better. Does that kind of make this uncertain time a little bit easier for you? Um, for sure. I mean, I, I feel like that has it's it's coupled with the training um and just being prepared and being focused um it's it's for me it's it's part of knowing that i'm doing everything i can to be the best race car driver i can be and uh and whenever my you know whatever my next opportunity may be when it opens up i know that i'm ready for it and i know i'm prepared so um you know at my level and what i do it takes sponsorship and and it takes a company to come and uh, financially support my efforts and to place me at a team um, that that can succeed. So, you know, having a, a plant-based sponsor is something I haven't had before. I'd I'd love to um, I'd love to work with a plant-based company. So, uh, you know, if there's any of them out there listening to this podcast, it, uh, it it'd be a cool conversation to have. Oh, maybe I'll talk to the people that control the uh, coffers here, see if we can't sponsor you for a couple races next year. There you go. That'd, <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, now, I understand that you are a new father as well. How's, uh, how's fatherhood treating you, man? Ah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. My wife and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old boy um, who's, uh, I think he's about ready to go to the park right now uh -huh. and play. <laughs> and uh, and then we have a three-week-old uh, uh, little girl. So um, the timing was just right with our new baby. The the season is coming to a close. And... Um, and so now that it's over, I think I can uh, get up in the middle of the night and and, uh, <laughs> and help mom out a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure your wife is grateful. Um, <laughs> y your boy, are you raising him plant based as well? Yes, yes. Um, he's uh, he's a little vegan kid, so cool. <laughs> um, it's uh, you know at his age right now, um, you know he eats what we feed him, um, so I don't think he knows any different. Um, when he gets older and starts going to friend's house, um, you know, I'm sure he's going to have a pepperoni pizza at somebody's birthday party someday. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure when he in the lunch line in school, he's going to, um, make his own decisions. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're not, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be his own person and whoever he wants to be. Um, you know, we, if he chooses to eat meat, then that's his choice. Um, but, uh, he'll probably have to cook it for himself. <laughs> Fair, but yeah. <laughs> and, right. Uh, and um and you know we're just gonna lead the uh, lead by our own example as parents and um you know hopefully hopefully even at a young age you know he's interested in in why we eat the way we eat mm -hmm. if it's um you know i personally believe that 10 years from now the way we eat won't be so different right um you know right now it's it's easy to say yeah we eat different than everybody else but um i don't think that's going to be the case 10, 10 years from now I agree. Um, so I don't think I don't think it'll be unfamiliar for him um, to be a 10 year old at school and and have uh, friends that are plant based. But uh, but if that's the case, you know, he'll um, he'll have his own understanding of why and, and why, why his parents do what they do. And, and he'll make his own decision. Now, I know that a lot of women, when they're pregnant or right after they have the child, they go off of a plant based diet. I, there are concerns maybe that the they're not getting the nutrients that the baby needs, but it doesn't sound like that's the case for your wife. Is that right? 
Um, with when she was pregnant with Beckham, she was a little concerned and she she wasn't really sure. So she ate um, eggs a few times through the pregnancy, thinking, you know, I'm just she kind of just wanted to hedge the protein side of things. Mm -hmm. And um, and she really didn't she commented that she didn't feel like she needed it. Um, and, and so I, I feel like her conclusion there was that, that it wasn't, it just, you know, I don't know. I think she could take it or leave it. Right. Um, you know, I, I think that maybe it, it helped her in some of the times that, that when we were traveling and she was pregnant and we were in a place that just had, didn't have very good options mm -hmm. and she felt like, um, she really needed to, to get something but um I, I feel like when we're home and we're we have fresh groceries in the house and we're cooking like on a consistent basis when when you're eating a proper plant-based diet you, you you truly don't need those things um and uh and so that's 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 really what we focus on when we feel like we're off center or when yeah. we feel like we're questioning what we're doing um you just have to reflect on what you've done in the last week and and if that answer is you know well I went to Taco Bell and had a a bean taco with no cheese on it, um, you know yes. that might be vegan, but that's not the answer to is the it, nutrients. Is it even vegan? <laughs> who knows, man? Yeah, who knows, right? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, final final question for you, fun one. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, your favorite smoothie recipe? What is it? Oh man, um, I can never seem to make it quite right, but my wife makes one that where she puts rolled oats and uh, peanut butter or uh, I think almond butter. Um, and, uh, it, it's just kind of like a, uh, it's like a real heavy protein, like, um, oat, like got a little vanilla in it. Yeah. Um, smoothie with some almond milk. Uh, it's kind of a good breakfast one. Well, let me, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, would it be possible for uh, you to get that from her and send it this way? We'd love to be able to share it with our listeners. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll get you the recipe. I think um, she gets a lot of her recipes from um, the Oh, She Glows cookbook. OK. And so I know I know it's not an original recipe, but I will definitely share it and, and share the source of where she got it from as well. That would be great. Landon Castle, man, you you are just a vegan treasure. So we appreciate you taking the time here, <laughs> my friend. 